license spoofing. The oldest trick in the pirate's book, fake keys. Imagine buying a movie ticket, photocopying it, and waving it at the theater guard like it's the real deal. That's what fake serials do. Early software trusted simple math patterns for licenses, easy to guess or brute force. Some even generated valid-looking keys by mimicking the algorithm itself. Remember Windows XP keygens back in the day? Yeah, those were everywhere. Developers learned the hard way that client-side validation is like locking your door but leaving the key under the mat. Now, modern apps verify licenses online, which is why you can't go offline forever without eventually getting that license expired message. Binary patching. This one's the hacker's duct tape. Just patch the app so it always says yes. It's like editing your school report card and suddenly, you're a genius. Crackers open the program's binary file and tweak the machine code. One byte flipped and the app stops checking the license at all. Back in the 2000s, GameCracks used this to skip CD keys entirely. Remember Adobe's endless battle with Photoshop cracks? Most came from simple patchers removing just a few verification instructions. Defenders countered with code signing and self-integrity checks. If the file changes even a bit, it won't run. In-memory injection. This is where things get sneaky. Instead of editing the file, attackers change the program while it's running, like whispering lines to an actor during a play. The script is the same, but the performance isn't. They hook into memory, modify values, or redirect functions on the fly. Some even use debugging tools to freeze the app mid-check and flip a false into a true. Nothing looks wrong on disk. Antivirus often misses it. Real malware also loves this trick. Cheat engines, game trainers, even some ransomware loaders all live rent-free inside your RAM. Reverse engineering. Reverse engineering is the art of reading compiled chaos. Imagine trying to understand a novel after it's been shredded, glued back in random order, and translated to binary. That's what reverse engineers do. They use tools like IDA or Ghidra to decompile and study logic, not to destroy, but to understand how apps protect themselves. Sometimes, entire cracking groups treat this as sport, solving digital puzzles. Some companies now hire those very same people as security researchers, because the best defenders are often ex-puzzle solvers. License file manipulation. Many apps store activation data locally in a tiny text or config file. Guess what happens when someone edits that? Instant premium access. It's like finding your club membership card in a drawer and adding one more year with a pen. Some video editors or offline CAD software used to store license info unencrypted. People would copy one legit license file across hundreds of PCs. Now, smart developers encrypt or bind licenses to hardware IDs. Humor aside, this one's common in corporate piracy where companies quietly share one license among a floor of employees. Hardware dongles and emulators. The golden age of dongles. Those little USB sticks that made your software run and broke every time you needed them most. The idea was no dongle, no run. But then came emulators, fake dongles in software form. Attackers would trick programs into thinking the magic USB was plugged in when it wasn't. In the 90s, expensive 3D CAD tools relied on dongles. One missing dongle could stop a factory's workflow, so employees themselves started cloning them just to be safe. Security through inconvenience always backfires. API and server spoofing. Modern apps live in the cloud, so instead of patching the app, attackers fake the server conversation. It's like sending fake approval letters from your boss to get paid. They intercept or replay valid API responses. Hey server, my license is totally fine, and the app believes it. Some even host their own fake license servers for cracked versions of paid apps. This isn't just piracy, it's an entire underground economy. Fake APIs, stolen tokens, modified clients. 
Defenders now fight back using TLS pinning, rotating tokens, and telemetry to detect anomalies. Keygen replication. And finally, the legendary Keygen, that tiny flashy program playing MIDI techno music while spitting out license keys like a slot machine. Creating a Keygen requires figuring out the real key generation algorithm. In the early days, crackers actually reverse-engineered public key systems just to find patterns. These days, cryptographic math killed most Keygens.